We have done lots of physics this semester. A lot of it. If you go back and you think through it all, you'll remember like a sweet dream. We started off with position and then we went to velocity. Then we went to acceleration and then we looked at our kinematics equations. We did free fall, projectile motion. Then we went on to Newton's laws what we call dynamics. F equals MA. Talked about force. Talked about mass. Two new ideas. Right? All these quantities. Position, velocity, acceleration, force, mass. Then we talked about energy. And we talked about momentum in the last chapter. So that's a lot of physics. But friends, we're going to do all of that again. I'm not making this up. But we're going to do it not in a linear context, which is how we've done it so far. I mean, yeah, we talked about objects going, you know, in arcs, you know, in para parabolic shaped arcs. We've talked about all kinds of motion that aren't straight. But we've always talked about x and y and a position on a flat xy plane. Okay. Uh, we're going to now today start with chapter 10, which is a situation that's going to start us off back at the beginning. For example, this video, it's not about position. We talked about position on day one of physics, right? Number line. Today we're going to talk about rotational position. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about rotational acceleration and velocity. Then we're going to talk about rotational force, rotational kinematics, rotational acceleration, uh, uh, rotational Newton's laws, rotational energy, rotational momentum. All of it can be translated from a linear context over to a rotational one. And that's the next two chapters. Okay, we're nearing the end of the semester. But don't flag, don't fall back. Stay positive, remain present, stay with me. All right? It's been a weird long semester. We're going to keep it up. We're going to finish strong. Today, rotational position. Here's the thing. We talked about position, right? Very simple idea. Now you got the number line. Label it X. Make it go positive to the right. Right? Now you can actually label that, right? So x to the right is positive. Right? It's arbitrary. We could go, we could make left be positive, but we just don't, this is, we get this is totally conventional. Okay? It's not necessary. We just decide to do it, like we drive on the right side of the road. Okay? And then on that number line, we place two bugs. A red bug at x equals 3 meters, a green bug at x equals negative 1.5 meters. Okay? And we picked our zero arbitrarily. Where we pick the zero of that number line doesn't really matter. But we pick it, and usually in a given problem, we pick it to be convenient. Maybe the starting place. Right? We've got a car going down the drag strip. We put zero at the beginning. Not because we have to, but because it makes our math easier. It makes our lives easier. Right? So it's arbitrary. But we pick some point for zero. And we use x to denote position. Okay, but that's what we call linear position. Contrast it now with the right side of the board here. We have angular position. Now we're, we're accustomed to theta, right? Theta is not a new animal for us, but we're going to be thinking about theta a lot more carefully. So we have two bugs. And now the question is not where along the number line are the two bugs, but where around a circle are the two number lines. Now right now it doesn't matter how big the circle is. Later on we'll talk about the radius r. In fact in this video we'll talk about the radius r, but right now don't worry about that. It doesn't matter how big or small the circle is. The question is where are the two bugs relative to this point in the middle? As an angle, okay, measured as an angle. Well it's arbitrary. We, we could decide to call any position around the circle zero that we want, but as we have done many times, we call sort of our positive x-axis to the right. We call this angle zero and measure all angles 
relative to this line right there. Okay, so our equivalent to x is theta. It tells us where around the circle the red bug is. Red bug exists at 45 degrees. That's the bug's angular position or rotational position. Okay, a lot of times, I'll go ahead and put this up here now, so a lot of times you'll see rotational and angular interchangeable. We can talk about rotational velocity or angular velocity. Now typically angular is the one you see more often, but we, we could take the two words rotational and angular and interchange. We could call this angular position. The red bug is at 45 degrees. It tells you where around the circle the bug is. Okay, Not what its x or y coordinates are. We don't care about that. All we're interested in is how far around the circle the bug is. And right now the bug is at 45 degrees relative to this arbitrarily but conveniently chosen zero over here. And the green bug, as you can see, the green angle is very large, 275 degrees all the way around. On, I mean, not all the way around, but, but uh, a little bit past three quarters, right? 275. That's where the green bug is. That's the green bug's angular position. All right. Now, in the same way that we call to the right positive, arbitrarily, we're going to call counterclockwise positive. Okay. So that the red bug is at positive 45 degrees. The green bug is at positive 275 degrees. We could also call the green bug negative 85 degrees because of this angle underline it in white because of this angle right there is negative 85 degrees. Negative because it's in the negative direction. It's in the clockwise direction from zero, right? So it's negative. Okay. So we pick counterclockwise or as they say in the old country, anti-clockwise or maybe that's Australia. I can't remember. Anyway, somewhere, some, somebody somewhere on the planet uh, calls this anti-clockwise. We call it counterclockwise. That's our positive direction. So that's how we indicate rotational position or angular position. Now there's more. Let me erase a little bit of this here. We're going to forget about the green bug for a minute. I got nothing against the green bug, but we're going to forget about it. We're going to simplify our drawing a little bit. We're just going to think about the red bug. Okay. And we're going to take this 45 off and we're going to put the red bug there, and we're going to say the red bug is actually moving. Okay. We'll talk more about angular velocity next, next video. So right now you can see there's theta. I'm going to erase this green business down here. And we're going to talk about the units. Okay, over here in linear land, it's easy. It's just meters. And over here, of course, one of the possible units is degrees. That's familiar to all of us, right? That's supposed to be parentheses with a little degree sign in there. That's familiar to all of us, degrees. But there are two other angular uh, or units of angular position that are useful to us, okay? Uh, so one of them, the most familiar, is the one that's least useful. Degrees is going to be the least useful to us. Let me finish marking this up a little bit, cleaning it up. Okay. Now, let's say a little bit more about these units. Okay, degrees we know, we're familiar with, 0, 90, 180, 270. And then back to 360, one whole loop around. Now, to introduce you to the other units, let's say that the bug here is on its way around the path. Okay, so he's walking. Okay, this distance that I've marked here in bright red is known as the arc length S. Okay, so that is the distance the bug has traveled, right? If he has a little odometer, a little bug odometer there, as he travels around, he has traveled a length s. So as he travels, s increases. Okay. Let's also label the radius of the circle 
R. Okay. That is the radius of the circle, R. Okay. Oops. Drop a pin. So at some point, as the bug goes further and further and further, theta gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Theta is getting larger. The bug is walking. Theta is getting larger. The arc length is getting larger. At some point, S equals R. And when, when S equals R, comma, theta is defined to be 1 radian. That's right. These are the radians on your calculator. So when S equals, when, when this arc length here, the red line, equals the length of the, of, of the radius, okay, then theta is 1 radian. Therefore, we can write with all confidence that S is R times theta. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, S equals R theta. Now it turns out that one radian equals about 57.3 degrees. Okay, so no matter how big your circle is, or how teeny tiny it is, if you're walking around the edge of that circle, okay, once you get to about 50, once your angular position reaches 57.3 degrees, your arc length and the radius are equal, and you are at a in an angular position of one radian. Okay, so one radian is a new unit, a radian, and it turns out that 360 degrees, a complete revolution, equals 2 pi radians. And yes, radians are indicated R-A-D, rad. Okay. So if one radian is 57.3 degrees, turns out that thinner, you can do the, do the ratio, 360 degrees is equal to exactly, mathematically, perfectly, 2 pi radians. Okay, and that's because the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, as you all know. Okay? Circumference of a circle, don't forget it. Circumference equals 2 pi r. One of those nice little facts you might want to carry around with you in life as you travel. Circumference is 2 pi r. Okay? So, we have our unit of the degree. indicated with a little grease on, we have the radian, which, which equals 57.3 degrees. Okay, actually let me do it this way. We have the degree. We have the radian, which is indicated RAD, rad. And we're also going to have the revolution. which is R E V. And one revolution, of course, is 360 degrees, which is, again, two pi radians. So these are our three units of angular position or rotational position. Okay, the degree, the radian, and the revolution. And this here, is how they are all related to each other. But I need to say one last thing about them before I sign off on this video, and that is this. These units, let's pull a new color up here just to keep things explosive here in the last minute of the video. These units, how's that for explosive, are all dimensionless. Okay. They don't carry any dimensions of, remember our three dimensions we talked about on the, actually literally the first day of class, mass and time and length. Okay, 
our three dimensions. These units carry no dimensions. So when you're trying to figure out the dimensions of, 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 of a unit or something, you don't have to worry about it. These, these, these carry none at all. Okay. In other words, there's no meters, kilograms, or seconds to any of these. Unlike, say, Newtons, right? Newtons is a kilogram meter per second squared. Not so with these. There's just no, no dimensions to them whatsoever. Don't let it creep you out. It's just the way they are. All right? Uh, that's it for now. We're going to pick up next time with rotational velocity, uh, displacement velocity, and acceleration. See you then. It'll be a hoot. And I'll try to keep my bugs around. I kind of like them.